Amen. Thank you very much. So are you ready for another two-hour sermon? <laughs> you know, we have read and have heard of the scripture that says that we should be growing in grace and in knowledge. Isn't it? Do you hear that yeah. verse? Yeah. And oftentimes we focus a lot on the growing in knowledge. I think God is bringing us to a point that growth is not only about knowledge or theology, but it's also about understanding His grace. But not only understanding His grace, but living it. That's growing in grace. And that's something that, uh, you know, we We've been studying in the book of Hebrews. Uh, we've gone through Hebrews chapter 1 and so forth up till uh, chapter 4. And uh, we continue on to uh, chapter 5. Um, when I was a young Christian, I remember sitting down uh, eager to listen to a Bible study on the book of Hebrews. I was excited to know more about the book of Hebrews. And when the minister started talking and speaking, in five minutes I felt, you know, ready to, to go home because it was so difficult with talking about the peace of death, talking about high priest, the blood of Jesus. You know, for a young person, I was struggling to understand what it is all about, but, but God is good. And uh, as we study the book of Hebrews, I just want to mention that the theme, you know, for, for guidance for us is just understand that the main theme of the book of Hebrews is simple because the book of Hebrews, all of it, is to present to the world the superiority of Jesus Christ over all. That's what the book of Hebrews is all about, to show us the superiority of Jesus Christ above all. Anything, not just Moses, not just the angels, but anything, Jesus Christ is superior. So here in the book of Hebrews, we discussed it in the last time about entering into God's rest, you know, about Christ. Now it goes into something a little bit different because he is so eager to help us grow in understanding about this new thing, you know. For you it's all now, you know, you heard about Jesus many times. But for that particular time, it is totally new and is very eager to tell us about Jesus Christ. And uh, the people were struggling because they were so much embraced to the old ways, to the old covenant. They're struggling. Now, if I go to, if, let me go to Hebrews 5, let me jump first to Hebrews 5 verse 11. Hebrews 5 verse 11. Uh, to start this, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11. Notice what he's saying here. We have much to say about this. So he's been speaking in chapter 1, chapter 2, telling us about Jesus Christ, you know, the great rabbi Jesus Christ, it's about the angels, about Moses, in verse 11 it says, and then, of course, before this, he talked about Jesus being the high priest. The high priest as the one priest that we have. But in verse 11, he says, You know what? I have so much to say. We have so much to say about this, but it is so hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. So the problem in this situation is not just that Hebrews, this teachings about Jesus Christ and being a high priest, it's not that it is difficult, but their attitude towards, towards it is questionable. He says, you no longer try to understand. Those young Christians, they're new, they left Judaism and came to hear the gospel, stop growing. They have become contented with their traditions. He said that it's okay. I, I wish I can tell you more about the death of Christ, about how this can be so free, about the relationship that you can have. And he goes on to, you know, he, he wants to say so much more 
He said, but unfortunately, you no longer try to understand. You have been contented with your belief. I mean, this is what I was born with. This is what I, I was taught when I was young. I'm happy with it. I don't want to learn anymore. They stop. But that's not the way of God. God's way is the way of growth. That's God's way. He, he progressively grows us into the maturity of Jesus Christ. We, we cannot stop and say, this is it. I'm sorry. I'm happy with my F-A-B-C. You know, spell cat. C-A-T. Spell dog. B-O-G. That's it. Don't tell me how to spell church. That's too different or whatever, right? You know, when we were young, we used to have, with our kids, we have this drawing, this picture. We show them, we show them a picture because they cannot yet read and C-A-T or cat. So we say, cat. You know, we show this picture. And then they have the drawing of cat or dog. Dog. Remember those things? It's a picture, right? But afterwards, the child grows out of that. They start from just those things and they begin to learn more. And they read books and they draw and read novels and all of that. They don't have to look at the pictures alone to grow. Now, in the Old Covenant, as the Israelites were going through and trying to grasp who this God was, God was showing them a lot of pictures. This pictures Jesus. This pictures, I mean, the old covenant has a lot, the blood, remember the blood, the pillar of cloud by fire, the pillar of fire by night, the rock that is Jesus Christ, the lamb that was that is being slain. Holy land is a, a place of rest. The Sabbath is a picture of the kingdom, of, of the rest of God. I mean, all of these were pictures to a people who are having difficulty trying to understand the magnitude and the depth of being God and, and His love. Pictures. And then comes the reality, and He wants us to grow. So, in this case, the issue with the Hebrews is they got stuck with their ceremonies. They don't want to go further. They, are, they, are, they love their rituals. Those, as we read a while ago, Moses is good, but there is something better. It's, a, it's, not a, it's not a competition between good versus bad. It is about good versus the best, right? So God is showing, I want to tell you, I want to give you the best. I want you to grow some more. It's not just about knowledge, it's not about pictures. There is something more, it's about grace, it's about the whole idea of who God is, his, his very nature. So, verse uh, 12, in fact, though by this time, you ought to be teachers, and you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. And he said, you know what? It's been years, we've been teaching this, We've been showing you what is chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. I mean, this writer talks about who? Jesus. The message of God is all about the salvation that we have through Jesus Christ. In chapter 5, we talk up to, I'm cutting short, in chapter 5, verse 1 to 10, he talks about Jesus who is the great high priest. Because in the olden days, there are priests who were chosen of men. They were all Levi. They are from Aaronic priesthood, they call it. You have to be of that particular tribe, of that particular blood, to become a priest. A priest is one who represents God to the people and one who represents the people to God. That's, that's a priest. And now the old covenant is done away and they're saying now with the apostles, we are under the administration of the new covenant, and these people are saying, how can, the, how can this new covenant be better than the old when you don't have a high priest? Because in the Old Testament system, the old covenant, the high priest stands as, as the core, at the foundation of their theology. Remember, to them the temple is very important. The temple is the symbol that their God's chosen. Then the land, the holy land, the Canaan land, they have the symbols. And for them, the high priest, because they have that, that gives them stability. We have the high priest who will offer sacrifices daily for us. 
so that our sins are your sins are taken care of. And now you're saying all that is abolished, shut down. What about high priests? You don't even have a temple, you know. Jerusalem was destroyed, but it was later on. What about that? So that's that's why the writer here says, we have a high priest, Jesus Christ, and he is of the order of Melchizedek. Yes. Now, the Bible only mentions in the Old Testament that Melchizedek twice, but Melchizedek was not of the blood of Levi or Aaronic prison. It's totally different. So what he's saying is chosen by God. So in the same way, Jesus is not of the Aaronic priesthood, but is directly chosen of God. He is God important. So let's go back to 5 verse 12. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. And I said, I wish we can tell you more. But, but now, why? Maybe you should learn, go back again to the basics and learn the rudimentary basic teachings. But it should not be, you say. You know, he said, you ought to be teachers. You know what it's telling me? God's purpose for you and I, apart from the salvation, is that God wished that all of us, no exception in this room, all of us be teachers. We're not necessarily to be a teacher to a big group, but even one-on-one. -on -one. That we can sit down and, ex and teach people the gospel, share Jesus Christ, be able to do that. That's what he desires when, when people ask us questions, we don't get lost. Like, well, I don't know, and so forth, but, but we know that in Jesus is salvation, that we can teach them. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God, uh, God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good and good from evil. So there is the maturing aspect of being a Christian. When a person is new in the faith, they're young, they still don't understand fully well the gospel. And that's understood. Uh, it says the new ones are like drinking milk. I mean, you understand it. You all, we all took care of kids, little kids, right? And when they're young, we feed them milk. You know, assuming if I don't have a baby's here, my grandkids, if they're here, and then I give them a bottle of milk, that's okay, right? But uh, assuming I get so, if I get so thirsty, and then I pull this out, <laughs> you know, and I started, oh. <laughs> how would you react? I mean, or assuming during potluck, you know, Maria will start passing bottled milk to everybody. Today, we will not have our hot dogs and chips, but we will all have bottled milk. Oh, yeah. if, I, if you see me, you know, okay, and then I pull this out and start doing this, some of you will call 911. Right? And will commit me and have a straight jacket and something. Something weird. I mean, does this look nice with me holding this? No, it, it doesn't fit well. And yet, that's what he was saying. What Paul is saying is that, you know, from a metaphorical perspective, you guys, you're all, and you're holding in part of milk. You've been in the church for a long time, you're still <laughs> doing this, you know? This, uh, me, I see that way. So I said, it doesn't look normal. That's not the way it should be. Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant is not acquainted with the teachings about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature. So that's, that's God's desire. So the point of the book of Hebrews is that there is so much more 
that God wants to share to us. In fact, here in chapter 5, he begins to talk about the high priest. He started doing that in verses 1 to verses 10. And he's saying to us, in, uh, like in verse 7, it says, During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence of mission. You know what he's saying? The, the, here is what I want to tell you guys, he said to this priest. This priest, this Jesus, is very different from the priests of Levi and Aaron. Because they just do the ceremonial thing without a heart. This, this priest that we have, he is compassionate. He knows us all. He said, he offers up prayers. You know, he, this one of the sons, there's a son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be the high priest. So this high priest, not just being theological about it, we have a great high priest, better than the old covenant high priest, because this one feels. This one is relational. He knows how we feel. I mean, don't we all need that kind of high priest? There are times when we're down and discouraged, feeling depressed, feeling like we're lost, but knowing that we have one who understands us, that's what the high priest is. It's the one who represents people towards God. And our high priest knows us all personally. He is your advocate. He will defend you. He speaks for you. That's our high priest. He has us on, the, on his grip, as mentioned. There's, he holds us. Yeah, like when he holds us like this. Even if we let go, he holds us. Now we may see, see suffer if we turn our back against him. You know, but it's not his fault. The fault is in us when we suffer because we turn our back against God. But with God, that's him. He is the model high priest because he loves us. And not only that, he saves us. So here he talks about this high priest. One, he is the great high priest, the only one. Your high priest. I mean, I feel good about it. But I have a personal lawyer, a personal advocate, the one who is with me. I don't have to worry whether I can trust. I can trust him. He is the high priest. And two, he is even the sacrifice. You know, before that we have lambs and animals, but this one is a sacrifice. He gave himself out of love. He is a sacrifice. Is that what they say? And then it also says in the scriptures, when we, say, when we read it, it says, The Lord is my dwelling place. He is even like the temple. He is the one. I mean, he is, Christ is actually all in all. He is our everything. It's not like separate from the sacrifice. He is the high priest. He is the sacrifice. He is the sacrifice. He is our salvation. He is our goal. So the writer wants to go deeper into this and said, don't, don't stop. Don't stop in your growth. Don't say, I'm done. You know, I'm done. And some of us all go by church of God. We stop at 1986. Right? This is it. You know, 1986. What? There is more to God's, God's understanding and, and teaching us. There is a lot more. So that's, that's basically what he's showing to us. Uh, you're, you know, all the, you don't need this, guys. Throw this away, you know. Move, move on. Sometimes you might want to drink milk, but not in bottle. Uh, so, you know, throw it away. So anything that, where we stop, where we embrace, can become an idol. I was saying it's not a question of good versus you know, bad or whatever, but it's a question of good versus best. But the good, so what the good can become bad if we make it above what is best. Because that good can become an idol. And so these people have made idols of those things, of these ceremonies, the rituals and all of those, 
and totally miss the whole point. So that's what the Bible says, and and do uh, training and teaching uh, in the church to grow in grace and in knowledge. Yes. And more and more, we're learning about God's grace, as, as mentioned, His grip on us. It's not an excuse for us to, to do foolishness, but knowing that because God has grip on us, so our response is to grab hold of Him too, to repent of our attitudes and to worship Him and to follow Him uh, as an example. So, anyways, that's basically Hebrews chapter 5 in a nutshell. So, um, now I'm not really a, afraid anymore to go into Hebrews because once you are focused on the theme of the book, and that is Jesus is superior above all. As we will go on to because as we go on to chapter 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, it will all be about the priesthood. But I will do my best to, just like in here, try to make that, that sounds complicated, to make it easier to understand. Because when I was younger, that's what I wished. I wish those teachers, when they spoke, that they made it clear to me as a young boy. But it was confusing enough. You know? So I hope this is clear for you all. That that's the issue. Christ wants us to continually grow in grace and in knowledge. Do not stop, but keep growing and embrace new things that God may reveal. And basically, it's all about Jesus Christ and His superiority above all things. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you so much for revealing to us that we do need to grow, not in knowledge alone, but grow in grace. Thank you, Lord God, for your patience. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the young people who spoke here, Lord. We pray that they will continually grow in their own understanding of who you are and in the grace that you have for them. Thank you, Lord God. We give you all the glory. In your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.